Doug has an article about the future fighter program poses key test for Air Force's new design methods. Yep. Doug. Yeah, I read that. See if I can Go talk ahead. this time. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> My voice is mostly back. Um, they're talking about the NGAD um, and the T7 both, and the articles particularly about advanced digital engineering techniques the Air Force once thought would lead to a revolution in rapid aircraft development, but it hasn't always panned out. They had troubles. Um, they had actually planned to call the T7 the ET7, which, you know, that's very 21st century of them. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then they had a series of missteps and delays that pushed back key milestones on the T7. Um, some representative, let's see, Heather Penny, senior resident fellow at Mitchell Institute for Aerospace, says it's not a magic wand. It's been around since the 1970s. Computers are better now, but it still missed some big elements of the T7 design, um, particularly wing rock and aerodynamic instability. So the computers have not saved the day. Is Heather Penny that is that not Lucky Penny? I do not know. Is that the oh. same? Isn't that the 911 F16 pilot? I don't know. Uh, I, can, I can Google that while you guys talk about this one. Yeah, Rick, what do you think about E, the E designation? And do you think it makes it any faster? <laughs> Give it up, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that answer, Rick. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> roll Next the credits. Question. Yeah, right. <laughs> roll the credits. <laughs> Let me tell you, that's another one of those things. We're going to save money. And that's horse crap. I'm sorry. That's, that's not a true, okay? <laughs> now, think of the U-2, okay? Revolutionary airplane. Flew in about... I don't know, a year and a half, something like that. That Hummer was designed with slide rules, for crying out loud. Slide rules and drafting boards. Now, the fact that you have better design tools means that basically you're going to save weight because you can get a better understanding of how the materials are going to react under the loads in, the, in an airplane. Now, aerodynamically, you'll get a better first cut at what the performance of the airplane is because you have better better techniques for figuring out what the drags and lift, yaw moments, pitching moments, all those things that, that decide how the airplane is going to fly, being in that slider, are also very good. But as Don Rumsfeld once said, and he was made fun of, stupidly, was you don't know what you don't know. And everybody thought, oh, so that's kind of a stupid saying. And it's not. You know what you know. You know what you don't know. But you don't know what you don't know. Mr. Dunning and Mr. Hey. Kruger would like a word. Yeah. Say again? Dunning Kruger. Yeah. <laughs> well, and so the problem with these guys that come in and say, we got all these new design tools is they cut out a lot of the stuff about the stuff you don't know, you don't know. And they don't know that. So all of a sudden, <laughs> you take off and the airplane goes, Woo, and that's not good. So you wind up spending some more money that you didn't budget for, spending more time to fix the things that you say, my e-technology is going to uncover all that crap before we get started. Nonsense. It'll cut out a lot of stuff but it won't cut out building an airplane and seeing what it does. You put a hairy hand fist in the cockpit and see what happens. <laughs> so wait, Rick, what you're saying, there's no replacement for actual flight testing and flight time. Absolutely right. I will tell you that <laughs> some, some whiz kids came down one time and said, we're going to do this. What was a predecessor to NGAD? and said, we're going to do it a lot faster and a lot cheaper. And I said, listen, the best practice that you can get is to build airplanes. Now, if you really want to make sure that the next airplane you buy in volume and spend a lot of money on, is what you ought to do is let out a few contracts, like every two or three years, and let the companies build a couple airplanes. And they won't have requirements, they won't have this, but they'll get the practice 
to build the next airplane by doing that. And it's cheap compared to what you're going to save and what you're going to wind up spending anyway when you buy a common airplane, to use technology, smoke dope, whatever. <laughs> I mean, there, there is no, the problem. If you were going to build a house, right? You go out there and say, "I want to, I want to build a house." And here comes Rick Abel with a fantastic computer program that can show you architectural drawings out to Yin Yang. And the, the only house he's built is one for his dog. Okay, <laughs> that's Rick's Lumen Storm Door and House Building Company. Over here is Harry Harry Houdini who's building houses like popcorn. And he tells you, this is what it's going to look like, and it's going to cost you this, and I'll have it done in these number of months. Now, who are you going to buy this thing from? Because I got a real cheap price. See, I don't have any inventory. I don't have any people on my staff. I'll just hire them when they come and I need them. I'm a hummer, 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 hummer. And there's over various guys building houses like they're, you know, paper clips. Now, who would you buy a house from? You buy from that guy over there. He knows what he's doing. You can believe him. This guy over here is going, oh, man. Mm, smoke coming up. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Poof, there's your house. See, look at, look at the drawing. Isn't it great? And, and put it on your TV, you know. You got TV, and he's, he goes around 3Ds, and you see where the jaw is. And, oh, I, oh my goodness, here's a man cave. Holy crap. I have, I have some of those. It's, it's only $1.98. This guy wants $14,000. Go away. <laughs> That's uh, what happens up there. So basically practice makes perfect. Sure. You can cut down on the amount of practice you have to do, but there's no, there's no substitute for doing it. And I will tell you that the, we could have done the F-22, F-23 program without the airplanes. But when we did, it taught those guys some stuff that they hadn't done for a while because there hasn't been any airplane programs for a while. I don't think it was necessary specifically, but that's just me. Because basically, the aerodynamics of airplanes hasn't changed much in a lot of years. They just, you know, the Wright Butters, that was really beginning, then came World War I, and then came World War II, and then came the jet age, and then pretty soon, Airplanes don't go much faster. They don't sustain G much more. They don't roll rate faster. The aerodynamics are pretty much done. Same thing with the innards of the airplane. The uh, materials have changed a little bit, but basically you build them the same way you want. So the practice is what you need to say when you don't know what you don't know, you learn. And then you go out there and you do it for real. So that 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 business of uh, I got all these magic whiz kids, uh, AutoCAD and three dimension and blah 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 blah, blah zing zing. It saves time, it saves money, it saves, but it don't save the money you think it does. And as soon as you can shoot all the marketeers, truth will run out. Basically, that was my job. Say this is what you can have. 